Hey listener, First Encounter is an explicit podcast by grown-ups for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Who wa who wa ah Or orc orc. Turn that GD light off when we record. Yeah yeah. Mm bop. Dap dap do up. Da da da. Bop. Yeah yeah. Hey! Hey! Come out and play! <laughs> oh, what a treat. Um, Hanny, thank you for joining me on this fucking uh, delightful day. Hey! Um, thanks for having doing? me. Ah, oh, thank you for ha- me having you. Hmm. We're fucking back, dude. We're back! Here we are, season two, first encounter. Season two. They said we couldn't do it. They said we weren't going to make it. That, that was just you. You said we couldn't do it. Oh. You you said we, we wouldn't make it. Look at us now, though. <laughs> look at look at us go. Um, yeah. Uh, Majora's Mask. Coming yeah. Up, coming up presently. Pretty fucking cool. I'm, I'm real excited about it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's going to be a real good time. Uh, before that, though. Huh? We're changing a little little bit about the episode. Oh, no. What are we doing? Um, a. Huh? Our, our fun little bloops. Huh? A little, little bloopies? Yeah, my favorite part of the whole episode? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're moving that to the end of the episode. Oh. After the outro. Huh. Because we want you to listen to that. And also, we're going to thank our new patrons. We have new patrons? Yeah, so many. I would, um, I would love to hear some of them. Or uh, all of them, if you'd like. Let's let's do all of them. All right, hit me yeah. with it. So we got huge thank you to Brett. Massive thank you to Ryan. Great thanks to Hyrule Podcasters. Massive thanks to Nonstop Final Fantasy. Humongous thanks to Seth. Big old giant thanks to Troidal Power. And humongous thank you to Julie. Also, a uh, special thanks to our X-Potion tier members, uh, Nonstop Final Fantasy and Mary. <gasps> thank you so much. Oh my goodness gracious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know what else we have, Hanny? What's that? Fucking producer. A producer? There's so- now a producer? For the first encounter podcast, yeah, producer level tier. Uh, thank you so much to Denise for Denise. supporting the production of all of this. This is incredible. Thank you so much, so 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 very much for becoming a producer level patron and for making the show possible. Literally, quite quite literally. Quite literally, <laughs> that's without you, we would have one less host. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mama. Um, Mama. Thank you so much for supporting us. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty incredible. We would definitely not have the the quality of the show that we do without all of you. So thank you all so, so very, very much. Yeah, you helped us purchase these fancy new mics that we're using now. Do you like the sound of my voice? Does it sound good? I really hope you do, because otherwise, why are you here listening to this <laughs> audio-only medium? Uh, what a delight. It's um, Chris's voice, isn't it? I knew it! <laughs> it was always Chris. I wish I had something glass to throw. <laughs> Just no, I'm not throwing these coffee cups. Just I bought pull them. the monitor down. I, I bought these. No, <laughs> no, I bought that too. <laughs> Chris, today is a momentous day, not just because we are kicking off our very amazing season two, episode one, with our brand new video game, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Only one week late. Just the one. It's genuinely a little surprising that it's only one week, honestly, yeah. considering it's us. Look at us go. But you know what? It's important to me that we take time to acknowledge today's gravitas, if you will, because not only is it the release of our season two, episode one premiere, but it's also a day for celebration because, Chris, we have our very first sponsor for the show. What? Yeah. Who the f- Figment, are you talking to? Well, Chris, I'm talking to Uncommon Coffee here in Vermont. Oh, I love them. They're yeah. They're really good. Great local shop here in Vermont. And you can also support <sighs> them and us by going to UncommonVT.com and checking out their page. Where- oh, that's a delicious product right there. Stop. <laughs> what? <laughs> You can support Uncommon VT. Oh Oh my God, I hate you. I'm trying so hard to make this work. I'm sorry. It's just so yummy. You can go to UncommonVT.com. That's Uncommon, V as in Victor, T as in Timothy, dot com and purchase 
a bag of delicious coffee. Using our uh, sweet, sweet code. Using our sweet, sweet code. It's sweet, sweet. That's our new code. It's, it's not, sweet, sweet. No, you stop. <laughs> this is payback. <laughs> I felt like I had such good steam going into that, and you were just like, what if I destroy this? I feel like I have such good coffee going into this, I hate which you. you can get at uncommonvt.com using our code good good. That's good good with no spaces, no dashes, straight up good good. Get all lowercase? All it uh, doesn't matter. Nice. Yeah. Get 10% off. Go to uncommonvt.com and check out their shop. They have some delicious coffees. They have some really cool shirts. They also have a coffee subscription. Check it all out. It's really really awesome. Although, they- if you do the subscription, you don't get the coupon code. Doesn't work on the subscription. That's fine. That's fine. That's fair. Yeah. What are we uh what what are we drinking today, Annie? This is Ethiopia Layu, I believe is how you pronounce it. However, nowhere on the internet had the ability to tell me how to pronounce it because nowhere because the internet sucks. Nowhere on the internet. I tried for 12 minutes to find (laughs) how to pronounce it because I wanted to make sure I was pronouncing it right. It's really fucking good. Really, really tasty. Uh, This actually stands alone great on its own. No need for cream. No need for sugar. It's it's real, real good. I was going to remark no additives for you this time. No, it uh, doesn't need them. No, it's, no, it's really good. Yeah. It's good coffee. Fantastic coffee. Fantastic people. It helps them out. It helps us out. Every Everyone wins. What a treat. Yeah. UncommonVT.com. With that, for season two, I'm giving up the reins of the controller, and Chris is giving up the reins of uh, story lead, oh. and we're swapping spaces. I am rosy-cheeked and eager for you to bring me on this journey. Perfect. So for this journey... I have decided that I want Chris to play one of my favorite games of all time. Also considered one of the best games of all time. This is true. However, it is, as per First Encounter style, one that Chris has never played before. It's true. We are going to throw Chris into the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Yeah. So, Chris, why don't you open up a little bit and tell me about your history with uh, Zelda as a whole first. I believe that I'm going to try to, without going back and copying our first episode for Final Fantasy, I'm going to try to copy our Final Fantasy episode. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm, I'm going to just try to stick to the same pattern. So talk to me about your, your relationship with Zelda first. So my relationship with Zelda as a whole is not very broad. Um, I had a Nintendo 64 growing up. That was my second console. Perfect. And the first or second game, it was either Zelda Ocarina of Time or it was Super Smash Brothers. Can't remember what I got first, but Ocarina of Time was the first Zelda game I played. And it was one of the best games I had ever played at that time. I think Final Fantasy VII and Ocarina of Time. I would hope that that's still the case, honestly, because Ocarina of Time is a just masterpiece. It's one of the few games that I've gone back and played again. So I loved Ocarina of Time. I thought it was incredible. Um, I thought the gameplay, the exploration, the world, just everything was phenomenal. But past that, I've only really dabbled, will uh, touch my toesies into the little dip. very deep water of the Zelda universe. There's a lot of water there. Yeah. So I've played a couple minutes of Wind Waker. Um, when you say a couple minutes, you mean literally a I couple minutes? I mean, literally, minutes? I didn't get through the first dungeon. Oh, literally a couple minutes. A couple got minutes. it. <laughs> um, Twilight Princess. Um, I've watched people play Breath of the Wild. Yep. I've touched the mobile games a little bit, but really, my Zelda experience mostly stopped at Ocarina of Time, specifically, as much as I love it, at the Adult Water Temple. Perfect. Yes. Um, so that that's my Zelda experience. <laughs> Ideal. Um, on that note, when you said mobile, you've touched the mobile. Do you mean handheld? Yes. Okay. I was going to say, I didn't know there was mobile version. I'm sure there is, but I haven't. I don't know. Oh, oh, you mean like phone mobile? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean uh, handheld. Perfect. Um, excellent. So I would say you are less than average in terms of most people in our field and their relationship with the legend of zelda which is absolutely perfect for what we're going here the main reason for that is really after the nintendo 64 i completely switched to playstation for my consoles so <laughs> and final fantasy 7 yeah, just yeah, steamrolled yeah. everything perfect yeah. well i mean final fantasy 10 9 8 like yeah. really you know yeah all right so i think one thing that i would love to do before we get into what you know about majora's mask is all of it <laughs> you know the whole thing i know it all yeah it's yeah. perfect 
is um, just kind of discuss a little bit what we think the differences are going to be between how we approached FF7 and how we're approaching Majora's Mask, because they are obviously very different games. They can't really be pigeonholed into the same uh, kind of genre or game style or platform or really anything. Like, they're very different. So I think overall, the format of First Encounter isn't going to change. We'll still do the playthroughs with conversation. We'll have the talk through after. We'll mix it all together in the same way. What do you perceive is going to be different, though, going forward? So this this is going to touch on a little bit of what I assume I know about Majora's Mask. But I would guess that the story structure itself isn't as structured as Final Fantasy. So it's going to be more open to what I'm going to pursue in the game. Okay. You're making expressions at me. Yep. Don't worry about it. From what I understand of uh, Majora's Mask, I think it's a lot of side quests and like doing what you want in the order you want. Maybe. Uh, we'll see. But I, f- I figure I'm going to be less guided by the story. Overarching story. Yeah. Yeah. And m- it's going to be more kind of your struggles figuring out how we um, guide some kind of semblance of uh, momentum, I suppose. I think, I, I think you're not entirely wrong. Um, I do think that there is certain things parts of the game that I'm definitely going to want you to not miss. And unfortunately, like Final Fantasy VII, there is a lot you could just walk by without even acknowledging it. Mm. Um, I think to aid me with this in uh, guiding you, I'm I'm going to bring over my Majora's Mask original um, guidebook and not let you look at it, but um, use it as a kind of a post. Because like you said, with the difference between this and Final Fantasy VII is that the structure is going to be fundamentally different. So I don't perceive too much of a departure from classic Chris Haney shenanigans. I mean, it's still us. It's still us. I think the struggle is really going to be your time walking the fine line between guidance and letting me just roam and go crazy. It's going to be interesting for, I think, us to both be on the other side of this. I'm I'm actually looking forward to it because it's going to be, I think, really hard for me to not spoil because I am who I am. Excellent. And I think it's going to be really hard for you to not be to be playing the game and not be the one that's just like sitting back smug. <laughs> I do have a a little bit of a control. Uh, <laughs> I won't say issue, but streak in me when it comes to these sorts of things. So it's going to yes. be very different. Yeah, yeah. It'll be good for you. A little, little bit of a therapy lesson, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I think that's all I want to touch on in terms of what's going to be different. So let's do something that's the same. Chris, go ahead and just lay on me what you think Majora's Mask is. Okay. Let me grab my notebook here so I can make sure that we visit these points again in the future. Please. So I think a big difference between where I'm starting with Majora's Mask and where you started with Final Fantasy VII is I have done a little bit of background research into Zelda in general, and that's touched on Majora's Mask a little bit. That being, without context, that could make it worse, honestly. (laughs) So let's see. Right off the bat, I think Majora's Mask, the way I understand it, is it's connected in some way to Ocarina of Time. I don't know whether the ending branches from Ocarina of Time or whether it has something to do with the timey-wimey shenanigans of Ocarina of Time. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I, I think that um, Majora's Mask is somehow branched from Ocarina of Time in some way. Okay. Um, I know that there's a Skull Kid. I don't really know what that means, but it's a, it's a kid. He's got a mask. Um, and I guess he finds the Majora's Mask? I don't know. Um, he summons a moon to destroy the Earth, and the moon crashes in three days, and you have to stop that from happening. I think the Majora's Mask, the titular character, if you will. I will. Um, <laughs> Particularly because you said titular. Yeah, it's an it's excellent word. Excellent word. Um, I think that's possessed or is evil or something, and it's maybe controlling Skull Kid. Aside from that, I know that you are collecting masks yourself that let you turn into different uh, species, I guess, of the Zelda world. Okay. So I'm pretty sure you can become a merman. Okay. <laughs> a um, One of those leafy things that spits at you. <laughs> yep. Um, one, you know, one so of those, this is what that feels like, huh? Yeah, one of those things that spits seeds at you. Huh. We've all encountered them. 
I didn't realize that this is what you feel like all the time, and I feel like I want to apologize to you. <laughs> I I should know what they're called, but I, I just can't. Shroomba? No, that's like a Mario. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> the seed spitters, you can turn into one of them, I think. I think you can turn into a merman, um, aka whatever the fuck they're called, and I think you can turn into a Goron. I do remember that name. <laughs> How is Goron the one that comes up for you? I don't fucking. Can know. you describe a Goron for me? Yeah, they're rocky boys. Um, they're like stout, round figures that eat rocks and roll around on the ground, and you have to stop them so you can get something that lets you go into a lizard's tummy to blow it up or something. I don't know. That was a boss or something that happened in Ocarina of Time. Right? That's probably the most true statement you've had yeah, to this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I know you. I, I'm pretty sure you can turn into those three things. I don't know about other masks you can collect. Um, I think you're a kid the whole time. Um, in Ocarina of Time, you transition between adult and child Link. And I think in Majora's Mask, you're a kid. And you're going around and doing side quests and like helping people with their tasks in this world that is inevitably ending. And you can use your Ocarina to turn back time. And I think that's probably where a lot of the puzzly elements come in if i could turn back time i would find a way to stop that meteor from crashing into gaia because <laughs> in this case it's a moon yeah. oh also the moon has a face it looks scary it laughs at you i know that because i've seen that everywhere i think meteor is missing a face in final fantasy 7 yeah you know, i think we could probably work on that i also don't know that i realize the parallels between Majora Majora's and Mask and Final, Final Fantasy VII until you mentioned that <laughs> just now. Yeah. Um, but I think that's really everything I know about the game itself. I know the development was like, I don't know if it was the Ocarina team, but basically it was a team of people who were like told to make a Zelda game in like a year and they were like, yep. fuck, I guess. So the game was developed in less than two years. Which is bonkers. And it was, I believe, the first Zelda game to feature the use of the game pack which for the N64 was an expansion that went into the machine and allowed for better... Gra it was basically like a, a boost right. that allowed you to have better graphics, better uh, performance, etc. And the game required the use of that because the graphics were so pumped up huh. from uh, Ocarina even. Okay. I didn't realize it was uh, that much of a step. Yeah. And the uh, creative team lead, I believe, for this was uh, Shigure Miyamoto. So you know it's going to be good. Yeah. 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 I, I do know Zelda is a silent protagonist. <laughs> Zelda is the silent protagonist. Part, I'm writing it down. <laughs> I misspoke. No, no. You, you said what you said. Zelda. <laughs> Zelda's the one who goes, hit, hit, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. and do you want to know something fun? This is not a spoiler at all. Sure. The voice actor that goes, hit, hit, yeah, yeah. in Ocarina of Time for the adult yeah. Link, it's the same voice actor that does the guy in Gurren Lagan who has the blonde hair and claws. Oh, with the v. oh yeah, 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 yeah. The one you, you cosplayed. Him. Yeah, I, I cosplayed him once. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Excellent. Very cool. Yeah. The Japanese voice actor. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never watched it in English. And I don't think they bothered changing the voice because it was just... <laughs> Excellent. Um, perfect. So I think that's interesting uh one thing i'd like to do is a rundown of the characters in majora's mask because the fun thing with the zelda games is that they usually have the same recurring cast so i want to see what you know about the cast of characters obviously there's no party like there would be in a typical jrpg but there is a uh, quite a large cast of characters that are very important uh to the overall story so i'd love to hear a little bit about maybe even just like who carries over from ocarina of time right so this this is a good timing for this because I was going to say I don't know if these characters make an appearance in Majora's Mask, but Ganondorf, um, big character. We got Zelda, the titular princess, if you will, if you will. Um, I will, by the way. Who is? I don't know. She's connected to the Triforce somehow. Oh, this is going to be so much better than I was anticipating. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got Sheik, one of my old mains from Smash Brothers, who is. Also Zelda, but Zelda has some teacher who like taught her to be Sheik or something, I think, mm -hmm. from some tribe. I think I think uh, Ganondorf was also from that tribe, maybe. Maybe not. I could be hmm, backing that up based on your face. No, 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 no. Please continue. Um, 
So, Derudo, Derudo Valley, Gerudo Valley. Derudo. Oh, Derudo Sandstorm. Derudo Sandstorm. Derudo Sandstorm is a song, yes. Yeah, whatever. And Gerudo Valley is a place, yes. And I think Ganondorf was a member of the Gerudo tribe or something. I can't remember. In Ocarina of Time. Okay. Um, so their characters, at least in Ocarina of Time, Link is the silent protagonist. I was going to say, Link Link was really far down that list. <laughs> eh, whatever. I already said Zelda. <laughs> Are you going to keep his name as Link in the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always do. Um, so Link is a silent protagonist. I guess there's Skull Kid, who I don't think was in... I don't think Skull Kids were in Ocarina of Time. Maybe they were in the Forgotten Woods or wherever the fuck Link's town was called. Uh, Kakariko Village, something Kakariko, something like that. I want you to know just how fucking good it feels to be on the other side right, of this excellent. microphone. I, I can't wait to, especially because I do feel confident in my Zelda knowledge, and this is really fun for me right now. Great, I'm glad you're having a good time. Yeah, you're um, sweating. Please, <laughs> there are some boys in leather um, <laughs> on motorcycles. Obviously, obviously. I mean, I know, uh, Link has a motorcycle in uh, fucking wind. Not Wind Waker. Uh, Breath, Breath of the, of the Wild. Wild. Yeah. Does he really? Yeah. I haven't played Breath of the Wild yet. It might be a DLC. I've, well, I, it's not that I haven't played it. I haven't gotten very far in it yet. Yeah. Because all my video game time is spent playing Final Fantasy VII. As still. well, it should be. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So Link. I said Link. Um, Skull Kid. I can't. I don't know if he's from anything in Ocarina of Time, but he's there. And I know the smiling mask salesman only because of the fucking memes on the internet and his creepy song that's played backwards and Ben whatever the fuck that was. But yeah, the smiling mask or the happy mask salesman, maybe. Um, I'm not correcting you. I'm just writing down yeah, whatever yeah, you say. Yeah. He's 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 in there. Um, I know there's a spider family. They're like cursed and they're half skull tulas, half people. Mm-hmm. Um, are the gold skull tulas still in this? As collectibles, I don't know about that. I'm not gonna tell you. That's fine. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's like bosses or dungeons in this one. I know that's a like Zelda trope, so I would assume there are, but I don't know. I don't feel like I ever hear about them when I read about Majora's Mask. And um, is Tingles in it? He's a character from Zelda, right? <laughs> Tingle. His <laughs> <Golden. laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean anything to me, but I know it's a character. It's like a green T- Tingle is a character. It's a green in... tight wearing balloon flying uh messenger? I don't know. Tingle is a character in the Zelda series. Okay. I'm not going to tell you if he's in Majora's Mask. Perfect. Though. I think that's all the characters I can think of. Like Perfect. there's I, I mean the there's the like Mermaid King and Princess. What the fuck are they called? Don't worry about it. We'll we'll get there. Gorons and the uh, uh you can't look it up i can't remember yeah and you can't look it up the mer people whatever perfect um they live in the black lake outside of hogwarts right yeah totally yeah with the squid yeah <laughs> and yeah uh i think that's all i know like the gorons exist the mer people exist uh th- yeah that's those, perfect. those are the characters as far as i'm concerned that's everyone who makes an appearance in the game i was genuinely worried about how this series was gonna go until we started recording this i don't know if this is the same feeling you had when we did our first episode of final fantasy 7 do you feel like a moron yes but specifically i i thought i knew a lot more about zelda than i do yeah turns out i thought i knew a lot about ff7 and didn't know shit about it yeah dude i didn't know that there was fucking electricity in the game and the main villain is an electric company and i said as such but then i didn't know that there would be electrical things after that like yeah i never thought about that yeah no like it's just there's absolutely like you think you know so much until you get to the point where you're like where someone asks you about it and then you're like uh yeah yeah yeah. and also at least half of what you said is just ocarina of time spilled over (laughs) there's a horse epona epona is a character in the zelda series (laughs) fuck you <laughs> <laughs> this is really exciting for me hmm, interesting interesting <laughs> scroll 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 excuse me let me quote chris opponents eight throw it out <laughs> uh, zelda is the titular main character of zelda <laughs> <laughs> zelda the silent protagonist that oh, fuck. they are uh oh link has like a girlfriend that's not a girlfriend some chick he grew up with 
from his village, but he's not one of them, I don't think. All right, sure. He's the hero of time. There's Triforces. There's three goddesses. Yeah, that's all. That's I, everything. That's... I feel like you told me more than I'm telling you right now in the our first recording episode, but I am going to say that you're getting a lot of crossed wires from what I can tell. All, I mean, all I know is Ocarina of Time. <laughs> you're, li- you're basically just throwing everything you think you know from Ocarina of Time into I, this game. I was game. assuming that uh, Majora's Mask was Ocarina of Time, I but, mean... but with a moon that destroyed the Earth. That's, You've that's said what I thought it wronger was. things before that okay, statement. Perfect. <laughs> I think the main reason I didn't play this game, I always got the impression that it was a very grim game. And I was just never, I never wanted to pursue that feeling. You in didn't want to be game. in that spot. Yeah. In that yeah. place. So what's changed now? <laughs> I guess I don't need to pursue games or fantasy escapes at this point. Right. It's weird to say because Final Fantasy VII is not like a happy game. I would say 75% of the time it's grim. Like there's funny parts for sure. Yeah. But I think a lot of that might just be the joy of us playing it together and making light of certain situations. Yeah, could be. Could be. I will give you one tidbit, if you will. It is a very Mm -hmm. grim game. Oh, excellent. It is extremely dark in comparison to other Zelda games. I always find Zelda games pretty dark though personally like i always feel like there's a sadness in every game a melancholy yeah like the you're familiar with the concept of the hero of time so i don't feel like i have to fully avoid that but Mm. i think the weight that that soul carries is really really depressing right like as the hero of time you're reincarnated over and over and over again to be the person that needs to be you know and that's in the grand scheme of of zelda you're you're reincarnated as the person that is needed to save the world over and over again so you're only ever living through the world's darkest moments that's real grim it's really grim and i've always carried that through zelda games where i'm just like this is really upsetting like link is a very tragic character yeah i've never thought about that yeah i think of it have you ever read the castaways of the flying dutchman no by brian jocks it's a really, really good book series by Brian Jocks, who wrote the Redwall series, which is probably what he's best known for. But it's about a immortal boy and his dog who are basically summoned to certain areas by people in need to help them resolve, like help them learn how to like fix their own issues. It's a really good story, but there's this overarching sadness because by the time you meet him, he's already several hundred years old and has done this before. And he knows he can't get attached or like make real friends with the people he's helping because he has to leave as soon as the problem's solved. So is his dog immortal too? Yes. The dog is also immortal and can speak only with him. Man, you add immortality into anything, it's immediately like a bummer. It's a huge bummer. Yeah. Particularly the soul of the hero of time. You just live like this circle of life over and over again, only to know that you're going to go away. You're going to die. You're going to be put to sleep for years, whatever have you, only to be woken up to try to make connections and try to help people and then not be able to live your happy ever after. What a treat. Yeah. Thanks for that. Perfect. I just want you to carry that feeling going into this game for me. Love it. Yeah. Ideal, really. Mm. (laughs) The last thing that we talked about in uh, our kind of first kickoff uh our our number one episode from season one was like what we wanted to get out of this yeah um so i think that's probably changed a little bit now so back then mostly what we wanted to get out of it was we wanted to do something together as best friends and final fantasy 7 was something that really needed to i feel like happen to bridge our our gap i don't think that majora's mask has the same importance on it to our friendship to a degree, although I'm very violent against you whenever you say you haven't played it. So yeah. maybe I, I could be going a little off there. But what are you hoping to get out of season two of First Encounter? Well, I, I do have to say right off the bat that I remember you talking about Majora's Mask since we were in middle school. Yes. So I understand its importance to you. So this is probably a game that I played around the same time you were playing FF7. Right. We were definitely in middle school at the peak of our youthful friendship at the time. Yeah. What would I like to get out of this? Um, I'd like to think at this point, first encounter is, it's not in the position of 
fragile collapse that I was nervous about it being when we first started doing this. I don't even fear it collapsing anymore. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like in the back of my head, I would hate for something to happen. Yeah. That means we'd have to stop doing this. But I don't feel like either of us are going to like drop out. We're not going to just stop one yeah. day and be like, oh, let's not do that anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was terrible. Yeah, Why am sucked. I doing this to myself? <laughs> Why did we do this for a year and a half? <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, what I'm most nervous about and most interested in maintaining across the seasons is our enthusiasm right and not the structure but being able to transfer the storytelling yep. over to other games and this is going to be the first kind of test of that i think that's something we're probably going to have to test every season and i think um obviously there it's going to have a different vibe you know it's going to not be join hanny on this journey it's going to be join chris on this journey which Ugh. we're just two different people but i think People who are going to listen to season two are most likely people who have listened to season one or have a heavy vested interest in the Legend of Zelda series. So I think what we'll probably end up having is people who just stick around because they like us and want to just hear more from us. But I'm also really excited to get you in front of the mic more and uh, force force the conversations out of you because that's going to be a a good time for me. Yeah, that's my follow up because I handpicked you if you will (laughs) from your myriad of friends (laughs) um because i enjoy your enthusiasm in your what's the right word you're you're just very like open um with your personality and your friendliness and your general handiness (laughs) yeah yeah you're very open about your handiness and i know i am a i'm gonna show you my handiness after this recording (laughs) (laughs) um i'm i'm a much more closed person and i don't like being the center of attention so i am very curious how this is going to feel with you being the leader if you will yeah having me as the i don't know that i'll be able to stop talking enough i sure hope not to make it that much different but yeah i think for me i'm really just excited to watch you play a game because you've gotten to watch me play a game for a year and a half and you've seemed to really enjoy it and i'm really looking forward to just kicking back with a coffee or a beer and just watching a video game especially one of my favorite games of all time being played just remember that everything you've put me through for the past year and a half i'm gonna pay back tenfold remember that that door swings both ways and you have put me through a lot (laughs) on this side as well excellent perfect (laughs) awesome i think my kind of last question is uh what can fans expect from uh, from season two? Dear, dear, dear me. I'm trying to just touch on our same yeah. points from uh, yeah, um, I season think, one, episode one. I think our listeners can expect just more of our shenanigans. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if we continue to evolve, because I know when we started First Encounter, it had a very different feel, at least to me, um, than where we have ended up now both in terms of recording and just how comfortable we are behind the mics and yeah. like interacting. So hopefully we'll continue to improve um, both in just quality of recording and also in um, quality of self quality. Well, I wouldn't go, <laughs> wouldn't go that far, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think just more of that good, good entertaining content. Do you know what I'm really looking forward to? What's it? Voices. Oh, that's another thing because there's so there's many... a lot of speaking characters so, in Zelda. Okay. Cause that's another thing that I assume I know about Majora's Mask and Zelda as a whole in that most characters don't actually have voices, but they have sounds that kind of play whenever they talk. Oh, yeah, I would say that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that one. That that one I would say is true, at least in, in the older games. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to apply our talents uh, to so many different... I'm very excited for ...colorful this. characters, yeah. It's also going to be really funny to not have, as you said, a silent protagonist, so to not have a voice for the main character be really funny either that or just the dead silence for a few minutes (laughs) it's also going to be interesting because we don't have like a core party so we're going to be developing like different voices as we play the whole time and it's gonna we're gonna go possibly months in between hearing a certain character speak because you'll you might do one thing and then you know go do a whole other mission that takes a couple of months to get through and then finally get back to that piece and be like oh what was that voice excellent (laughs) Is there any other final thoughts you have for this game that is not Final Fantasy? Um, yeah, I mean, if if you've made it this far, thank you so much. Like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know how Chris and I barely made it this far. No. <laughs> it it means a lot. Really, really does. But also, if you came here primarily for Final Fantasy, 
give it a listen. Keep going. Yeah, there's a lot of great games out there. And I think one thing that Chris and I are both hoping to open ourselves up to is other games and sharing games with others. So for Chris, Final Fantasy VII was extremely important for him to share with me and with our audience as a whole. And now for me, it's extremely important to take what Chris has created for Final Fantasy VII and carry it forward with the same exuberance and brightness and community that we've grown in season one and continue to grow and improve it in season two with The Legend of Zelda. One of the reasons I chose this game in particular was because it has a big enough following to make it so it's still accessible for a lot of people like the chances are pretty good that if you've played final fantasy 7 you've probably played a zelda game Mm. maybe not majora's mask but you've probably played ocarina of time or breath of the wild or one of those and that's not necessarily true but it the chances are pretty good and this game is also from around the same era so we're still trying to work with the people that we've made connections with and i think I'm hoping that those people that came for Final Fantasy VII stay for dessert. Yeah. Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, just lost my train of thought. I love trains. Shit. That's probably going to be the worst part about this. Ass. Not enough trains. Not enough trains. I'm going to say not enough trains. So there's a train, potentially. Potentially. There could be anything, really. You have no idea. One thing that's going to be really fun is I pinioned all of my thoughts about Final Fantasy VII from what I gleaned from Kingdom Hearts and Advent Children. Yes. So you're going to do the same thing with Ocarina of Time with probably about the same distance. Between... And Super Smash Brothers. Oh, boy. <laughs> Which we Donkey can do Kong a... makes an appearance, right? Uh, I know he's. I know he's a Mario character. Is he also a Zelda character? Not to my knowledge. Hmm. But, I mean, Goron's had to come from somewhere. <laughs> i think that's probably a good spot unless you yeah no else. i think uh with that <laughs> uh thank you so much for tuning in for this little kickoff for episode one and can't wait to see you in episode two season two of season two the legend of zelda chris's mask uh, <laughs> yeah yeah thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time bye bye Thanks so much for listening to the First Encounter podcast. If you want the journey to continue, please support us at patreon.com slash first encounter. Find our socials and contact info at firstencounterpodcast.com. Please stop by and say hey. Our intro and outro music is by Alden Zach. Hey! Hey, pumpkin. What uh, what brings you to my my little area here? Well, would you you like to look at my area? Would you like to display your map? I'm the map. I would like to buy Tingles' map for your area. (laughs) Please, please show me your tingle. (laughs) Kulu Limpa. Ooh. Uh, Hey, 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 you. That was real squeaky.